This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Likeable. Science is likable. This is likable science. I'm Jay Fidel, likable science at 2 p.m. on Friday, no surprise. And Ethan Allen is to my left, and we're going to do this thing together today. Hi, Ethan. Howdy, Jay. Nice good, to see you. Good to be Happy here. Happy New Year. You know? Happy New Year. So what's, what's interesting is that uh, this week, the Chinese landed a, a spaceship and a, a, a lunar rover on the dark side of the moon, our moon. We thought we owned the moon. <laughs> we don't own the moon. Oh, no. And at this point, I think they more likely own the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the South China <laughs> well, let's, let's hope we don't get that contentious about yeah, it. Really, <laughs> hopefully. Well, okay, so can you tell us what the, you know, what the environment is? You know, give us an establishment shot of you know, what, what's out there that needed to be challenged. Well, well the, the sort of technological tour de force that they, they did was landing on the so-called dark side, but it's not really the dark side. The moon is caught in what's sometimes called tidal lock with the Earth. So we from Earth only ever see one side of the moon. We see one face of, the, of that sphere. And that face always faces Earth, and the other side always faces outer space, as it were. As, so the moon rotates on its axis with exactly the same frequency that it cir circles the Earth. How, how does that work? Is it a m mass and magnetism? Is it, it physics? It, 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 and so it must be physics. It yeah. probably has to do with how it got established initially and, and what happened to set it, sort of set it in place there and how it coalesced. Um, because obviously the Earth spins a lot faster on its axis. It spins every 24 hours and then takes 365 of those days to go around its parent body, right? So yeah. a very different pattern. Yeah, yeah. The, the moon that is, the moon's day and its year, if you will, around the Earth are the same, uh, the same length of time yeah. so but this is not the only place in the solar system where moons moons uh, keep looking right at the planet some, some moons are, are tightly locked in, in other places too moon lock yeah, tidal lock it's called but it, tidal lock. yeah it has to do with how it, the, the gravitational forces are it's set. like moon struck but <laughs> not the same thing <laughs> anyway but, okay yeah. but the, the problem with that is when you come to look, land a probe on that back side the, the moon is in the way then, and you can't send radio signals back to Earth. So you can't either give instructions to your probe or receive any data from your probe. Now, if that body were spinning faster and rotating around, you could you know, you'd get a few hours of data and you could upload instructions to the probe and download data and everything would be fine. But because it's tidally locked, once you've dumped something on the back side, it's there and, and you're not going to communicate with it directly, mm -hmm. except unless you've done something very clever, which is what the Chinese did. So in any two-body system, the Earth and Moon being two bodies, there are five points, so-called Lagrange points, where the gravitational forces between those two bodies are balanced out very neatly at five points in space. So you can drop a satellite and have it essentially sitting there doing a little orbit around nothing at one of these points, and it will more or less stay there pretty much indefinitely. It's sort of held in place by competing gravities. Okay, unpacking some of that. Right. Um, let's see. Now that that was called. So, and so that's a, that's a, the relay satellite. The relay satellite, satellite, which was named by the Chinese. Well, the 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 lunar probe was called Chang'e Four. Right. Which is Chang'e is their lunar goddess name. Okay. Right. And and the uh, the sat relay satellite was really a very clever part of the. Right. In fact, an essential part of this whole thing. A absolutely. Is uh, what was it? Uh, Chi Chow, Chi Chow, something like that. Yeah. The spelling, right. I'll spell it a Q U E Q I A O. Chi Chow. Right. Okay, so this is, you know, to tell the truth, though, it sounds obvious. I, I, I know that it shouldn't sound obvious, but it does sound obvious. You you can't you need to communicate with this thing mm -hmm. on the far side of the moon. Right. There's no way to communicate with it through the moon. Right. So you have to you have to find a way to communicate. So you make a satellite. I guess I think the really uh, the, the value added here is that you're using this uh, Lagrangian point calculation mm -hmm. and finding the right spot so the uh, the um, communications satellite will do the right thing on a continuing basis, yeah, exactly. and only then can you have the satellite actually perform. Yeah? Right. Yeah. I mean, they put that satellite in place first and made sure it was sitting there stably because now it can just sort of sit there and it not using up particularly much fuel at all. It doesn't have to go anywhere. It doesn't have to power itself. 
It just hangs there, and then it can get direct line of sight with anything on the dark side of the moon, the back side of the moon, and at the same time, it can communicate directly with Earth. Yeah, so, and, and you know, with modern day telecom, and I assume they have that, um, uh, you can communicate to land the vehicle on the moon, mm -hmm. you can communicate to move the pro, what do you call it, the, the moon, right. so the, they actually have, the right. probe around? So there are, right, there are three parts to this. There's that relay satellite, there's the lander, and then the lander opened up and spit out a little rover. The rover. So all of that, right. you really need to communicate. So somebody right. back, somebody is, yeah. it's like a drone. Exactly. Somebody back in China, China is, is driving moving it around. Yeah, yeah. because you can't, yeah, you, you, you can't just let it go randomly, right? It's let it run into a rock. Because you, know? you don't know what's there. Right, exactly. You know, you have yeah. to. And it can send pictures back. Right. You need the satellite for that, too. Exactly, to get that, that two-way flow of data. So it can send its images up so you know what you're, what you're looking at and where to go. I mean, while it's also sending data back, you're sending commands up saying, go right, go left, go ahead, slow down, dig here, whatever. Oh, well, yeah. And, and, you know, finally, the most important thing is do some experiments. Right, right. Evaluate the soil, evaluate the conditions. Right. So uh, they're, learn stuff. They're doing temperature probes. They're doing visual analysis, spectral analysis. They're sampling the uh, atmosphere, such as these gases, the types of radiation. But the really one interesting thing they're doing, they, they basically stuck a little terrarium on this thing. It's about a... Uh, six and a half pound can, uh, you know, foot and a half long, uh, and it's got some soil, it's got some plant seeds of potatoes and tomatoes, and I think a mustard plant, and it's got silkworm eggs in it. And the idea is basically it's all sealed, uh, so it, it better keep it warm enough, basically, uh, and they want to see if they can get a little ecosystem going where the plants will go and start growing, they'll produce oxygen that'll allow the silkworms to grow up the silkworms will produce carbon dioxide that'll allow the plants to grow and everyone can be happy together but it's a sealed system yes though. a small sealed system i, right. I don't know if it's a legitimate concern but it strikes me that one reason to have a sealed system is to uh, protect the moon from any microbes that may be in that system uh, that may cause trouble or go out of control somehow in in the moon am i right about that um that's probably a sort of secondary level of concern, yes. Most of our things that like to live on Earth aren't gonna do well at all on the moon. The moon's just not a, not a happy condition for them. They'll die. Yeah, it, ha it has no air, it has very huge temperature extremes and uh, uh, high radiation. And all mm. three of those are sort of big strikes against, against what, mm. you, what you probably so, want. So the primary reason for sealing the system is to have the system survive. Right. It exactly. doesn't have, it, 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 the essential elements would escape right. into the non-atmosphere or the very low atmosphere of right. the moon, and then you, and the whole right. terrarium wouldn't work. Right. Yeah. I should point out, some, some things on Earth do pretty well. There are these little things called tardigrades, that are these little tiny bug-like creatures that are incredibly tough, and some of them have gone on space flights and, and actually been out in, outside of the spacecraft for some period of time, and, 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 and they continue to live for a surprising wow, length of time so after that. <laughs> You know, you they're know, they're very tough little animals. There's a negative side to that. <laughs> you know, we could go back a few years later and find the whole moon covered. With <laughs> Maybe they'll thrive. <laughs> so, okay, I mean, it sounds very scientific. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, uh, you know, Ethan is our chief scientist here at ThinkTech, aside from being part of being uh, the host of Likeable Science. So, um, you know, this is, this is, it's, it's interesting, so, so many points. You know, one, let's just look at the reasons the Chinese went to the effort. Because mm -hmm. this is not a time when a lot of probes are going to the moon. Right. I mean, we have some stuff going to Mars, unmanned mm -hmm. to Mars, but not to the moon. And, um, and maybe not as sophisticated as this sounds pretty sophisticated, right. although it's unmanned. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, what I read was uh, the Chinese did not intend to send a manned vehicle to the moon for another 10 years at least. Yeah. Probably, yeah. So uh, why, why did they do this? Are these experiments that important? Are they into this kind of science? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a showy thing to do that, that was sort of doable. I mean, I, I would say it's not rocket science, but it obviously is rocket science. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but nobody had done it before. They crashed a couple of probes onto the dark side of the moon, the back side of the moon, but nobody had set something down there gently and stayed in communication with it. And yet, 
people figured out long, a long time ago, all it would take was, yes, you, first you dump your relay satellite into the right little Lagrange point, and, and everything should be hunky-dory. You know, it should be easy enough to do. But nobody's done it, so it, it's cute. And they've done it in, on the very, near the south pole of the moon in this very large crater called the Aitken Crater, Aitken Basin, which is a huge old impact crater that is uh, about eight miles deep. That is the okay, center. Here we are. That, yeah, the center strong. of that blue there is about eight miles below the surface of the moon, basically mm -hmm. below what would be the surface. The blue is, rep is an artificial it's, color. Yes, it represents yeah, yeah, the depth. distance from the camera. Yeah. Well, the depth, yes, right. The depth, yeah. okay. And uh, because it's so deep, it was a big impact crater, there, expect there is deep lunar crust essentially on the surface there. And so they can find out more about the moon's history and what, what it used to be like, what its crust used, original crust looked like, rather than looking just at the, the, the new surface of the moon. So, right? so the, the device, the, the, the uh, what do you call it, the, the probe itself, right. um, is in that blue area. Yes. It's at the bottom right. of it's, the blue area, and therefore it, it has a greater set, opportunity yeah, to do it, experiments. It's then. in one of those little craters inside that big crater, basically, yes. Um, do you know, do we know whether this is ever going to come back or just send signals? I do not believe this, they plan to get this back at all. I don't believe they have any technology put onto it to have it pop up. That's their next one. The next, this is Chang 4 and Chang 5 and 6 are going to go to the moon, grab surface samples and come back to Earth mm -hmm. supposedly and bring, bring, bring so. lunar materials back, which will be the first time since the Apollo flights. So this is, this is part of a long-term series, a yes. long-term plan. Yeah, this is the fourth in a series of six, as far as I know. They've and they've already been there. The right. Chinese, the Chinese have been to the light side of the moon, yes. I guess, not Chang the dark three side. Hit, hit the yeah. light side, yeah. So, uh, you know, it really sounds like, in terms of the science, they want to own the science of going to the moon. They want yeah. to be there. Um, okay, so and, that, and that's, that makes them look good, for sure. Right. And it makes us look maybe we, like we abandoned our <laughs> interest in the moon. Right. Which we yeah. did, I think. Yeah. It's really too bad. Right. Uh, administration after administration didn't seem to care about it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and they didn't fund NASA as well as they might have. So, but aside from that, aside from looking good, certainly they do. Um, could there be other reasons for that? You know, this, I guess there's pure science. Mm -hmm. They're learning stuff that we humanity right. did not know. Sure. Um, and they're learning stuff maybe we didn't know either. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I don't know if they'll share that with us or not. Mm -hmm. Um, but the question is, is, what else? Is there a geopolitical reason? Is there a South China Sea reason here? Uh, do they want to, you know, sort of assert jurisdiction, sovereignty, a claim over the moon, do you think? I, I believe, as far as I understand it, we, uh, the nations, many of the nations on Earth, all the ones capable of doing space flight, agreed some while ago that the moon was, was sort of not to be claimed as sovereign ground by anyone, and oh, was, was yeah. basically jointly by, by the Earth. Uh, so a binding global agreement. I we, believe, we know I how binding that, those I, are. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. And so yes, by putting, by showing they can go to the dark side, the back side of the moon, you put, in theory, put stuff there that's going to be harder to see, certainly. It's, it won't be totally hidden, but it it's, makes it much more difficult for people to see it. They really have to send a satellite out to look for it. For well, let's speculate. Light. What, what, what might you want to put on the dark side of the moon? Where people can't see. I mean, for example, they have the telecommunications, you know, satellite out there. Mm -hmm. We can't access those signals. We have no idea. Well, we, we get those signals. I assume everything is coded. Yeah, right. You it's know? coded. It's encrypted. What now? now if, if, and it's probably in Chinese on top of that. Right. Now, so if we broke that code, we're not going to understand you know, that. Uh, we're all fine. So, it's, and there's no big mirror back there, <laughs> and we have no way right now. We have no way of seeing what's back there. It's a hidden place in the sky. Right. That's what it is. I mean, for example, you could amass equipment. You could amass other, other uh, you know, uh, lunar probes um, to do other things and leave them quietly there. And we, in the U.S., we wouldn't even know what was there. Well, I, I think our intelligence agencies track pretty closely when you knock something up out of our atmosphere, send, send any significant chunk of matter up out of our atmosphere on this planet pretty Pretty much, it leaves a heat trail. It, it oh, we know some something noise. went there. Yeah, and and but they'll, they'll we'll track know it. And what went there? Well, they could track it and figure out, you know, why if you dump six payloads of something yeah. uh, there, and, yeah. and we, we'd get pretty suspicious after a while if you kept doing it, would. not not talking about it. Should actually. But it is interesting. They they didn't make a big deal in China about the, about that. Uh, interesting enough, they that ran 
like fourth or fifth level news story of the day when, when this landed, whereas it made that. headlines here yeah. in the U.S. Remarkable. You yeah. know, the day that it happened, right. which would be what? Uh, so on Wednesday, our Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. our Wednesday, their Thursday, right? right? So. Um, uh, we had big press. Right. It's only yesterday. Yeah. Right? Uh, no, it's two days ago. Right. We had big press about that. Right. And it was all over the place because it's a sexy thing. Right. It's a clever thing. And we got upstaged. Right. Sorry. Yeah. We got upstaged. Um, they, on the other, and then there was a, an article in the paper, I think, this morning, mm. as to what you say, that, that, that the Chinese papers didn't make much of it. Right. Some of the, some it of the was, citizens wait, didn't know no, about it. It yeah, happened. They weren't aware it. of it. They yeah. didn't seem to care about it. Yeah. Either. Right. So why? What, what is it that, you know, what is it that the, the Chinese public don't care about? What is it the Chinese government doesn't want to really make a big deal about? Yeah, and that, I mean, that's interesting. Why what they choose to prioritize, not prioritize, what they choose to talk about, what they choose not to talk about is clearly sort of centrally determined on people, their governmental leaders have their priorities and they know what news they want to feature and what news they don't want to feature. I don't really claim to have any understanding of it. Um, I, I, think, I think they're increasing in a sort of untenable position with more and more information channels opening up all the time flowing around the world. To try to muzzle it this I think, way. yeah, trying to yeah. Put, put, yeah, you say, muzzle all these voices is going to be harder and harder in the future, but that's... Uh, it really, it seems kind of strange to me, and maybe the lesson here is this is what happens when you have the government controlling the press. Mm -hmm. The government has decided that it's going to put political stories on pages one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, and a science story on page five or whatever it was. Well, I mean, yeah. And, and it's not important. The science is not important to people. It's the political. They want to influence their thinking. They put they put it on a political story at the top of the stack. That that could be what it is. Right. It, it could be they were worried about the public reaction because China's hit a little bit, I guess, of a downturn economically recently, and maybe they're worried that people in China would say, "Why are we spending all this?" Well, money? that was in the story right. too. Yeah. They were concerned, and maybe some people right. expressed concern. Right. That the, why is the government spending this money when, in fact, we're having a bit of a downturn? Right, here? right. Why aren't we doing better things for our citizens here on the planet? You know? yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you mentioned one other thing when we spoke before about this, um, and that is that, um, um, gee, I forgot the point, but it was something about uh, we, oh, yeah, the, the point you made, and I, and I think it's a really valid point, is that this is a risky business. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to look bad if we fail. All right. So let's put a lid on it. We won't really talk that much about it. If we fail, nobody will be all that concerned. Right. And we won't be subject to as much criticism right. And you know, if we fail. Right. Um, if we put it on the front page story, then if we fail, we're going to look terrible. Right. And that's the way you manage your image. Right. And while they apparently have succeeded, and you would think they might trumpet it a little more, they may be worried too, it might break down after two days, right? And, and the whole thing is sort of a worthless. And we're still in that pocket of risk. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Not, not like some of, some of our probes that are going 13, 14 years later, right? And they've continued to run around and do good things. You know? Yeah, I, I feel we're, we're in a pocket too, you and me, actually. That's Ethan Allen, he's our chief scientist. And we're gonna take a pocket of break. <laughs> we're gonna see about the risks and then we'll come back, you'll see. We'll be right back with Likeable Science. <laughs> Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. You like science. <laughs> well, this is likable science. This is so important we study these things, even at great distance, even on the, the far side, the dark side of the moon. 
Okay, and uh, Ethan Allen is our chief scientist. He's here to tell us about that stuff. So um, I guess uh, let's look at the slides you have, which were released by the, the Chinese news, news agency to the world um, and see what, what they mean. Here's one. So yeah, this was, what I think, they were maybe their first shot they released. Uh, it, it shows, a, again, a, a pretty sort of grim looking uh, landscape out there on the, on the, the floor of this crater. Um, you know, nothing, of course, very fancy, just barren rock. Uh, you know, people who study this kind of thing can tell all kinds of uh, stuff from the color of that and the, the granularity of it and the little pock marks in it. And there are a thousand clues to all kinds of information just from the shot, but uh, it, it doesn't look like a hospitable place. Is the, uh, is the probe on the, on the, on the floor? This, here? I believe, was taken after, yeah, I believe this okay, is so maybe. So pretty smooth. Yes, and then, now, now here is the probe when it's the, the lander dropped some little ramps down and the, the rover has gone off now and is leaving tracks. Just for perspective, that right. lander is what, about four by four by four? The, the, the rover is, is roughly, yeah, uh, four, four or five feet long, three feet high, three feet wide, roughly. You know, yeah. little, little wings on it there. Mm -hmm. the, the Those wings are solar, solar panels. Solar panels. See, it's not the dark side of the moon, right? It's, ah, right. It's eventually going to get into the sun uh, and then, then it will pick up. It has a, uh, basically a enhanced, uh, what do they call it, an enhanced? The photo. Well, a, a small nuclear power oh, reactor right. to give it a little power. E even in the... In the uh, so it can get through the dark times when the sun isn't shining. Yeah. Okay, okay, uh, interesting. And, but then it, it, when the sun is out, it, uh, it wants to gather its power from the sun, you know, to keep, keep it going, so, yeah. I, well, can you clarify one thing, though? If it's the dark side, why is there sun on it? Right. See, that's why calling it the dark side is really a misnomer. It should be called the back side or the far side. Okay. Uh, because it's, it's sometimes it, the dark side right. has sun. Right, exactly. It has every bit as much sun it's as just, the front side. It's just side. the dark side. It's, it's far back, from it, us. Yes, exactly. It's the side we never see, so it is sort of dark to but, us. But when sense. it's pointing to the sun, sun it's, which it's happens. It's blazingly hot there. Yes, it's, it's in full sun. Just like the right. other side. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, it arguably gets more sun because it's never shadowed by the earth. Right, right, right. right. And, and closer well, to the sun, well, too. When it's yeah. <laughs> Okay, what else we got? Is that it? Yeah, those, those are the two shots I was able to find on the, the, the map again the, the, of, of the big crater where it landed, but yeah. Okay, so, um, you, know, you know, I think this is really an upstage for us. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't done this in a long time. Right. And, uh, and somehow, I mean, it is a competition. It's a science competition. And what they're saying in, in a neon sign way is that we're right up there with you. We, yeah. In fact, we're further than you are. We have done things you haven't done. Right, exactly. Um, exactly. And so the, all the world to see. I think mm -hmm. that's got to be a big thing for the Chinese sense of uh, excellence and supremacy. Right, right. It, it really says, yes, we're certainly an up-and-coming power, and, and here's, you know, we're, we're making our statement in the space race, as it were, and saying that we can do the same stuff that you've done and do it better, maybe. Yeah. Now, despite that agreement you mentioned where everybody agreed that, <laughs> you know, it would be sort of common property up there, mm -hmm. If I if I wanted to sort of take control of space, mm -hmm. and if I could make my if I could um, own the moon, so mm -hmm. to speak, both sides, then I suppose I could shoot down communications and, and military satellites all 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 around the Earth because it passes around the Earth, and there could be um, you know some um, some sensors, telescopes up there to, to see where the satellites are and but, shoot them down. But, right? but you could do that from Earth, Earth's surface. You're much closer to the satellites. Here to the satellites is much shorter distance than satellites to the moon. Okay. Much, much, much right. shorter. Flush that one. So, <laughs> I mean, what, you know, is there a practical purpose for all this aside from crowing about it? I, I don't know. I mean, yes, there were there have been you know the conspiracy theorists will tell you the U.S. has you know military bases on the dark side of the moon and, and all, but you know I, I think that's utter nonsense, quite frankly. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, if so, why? <laughs> what have we done with them? <laughs> why? Uh, yeah, I, I, and I don't really see that, the, you know, the, the, there's any particular sort of geopolitical advantage other than, other than basically it's sort of a nice piece of one-upsmanship, basically. That's what it is, yeah. yeah. The other thing, I think it tells us things. I mean, it's a sort of identify sea changes, and one sea change, it seems to me, is that manned space travel is really, although we have a lot of tourist possibilities going on, mm -hmm. Um, you know, manned space travel to go to distant places is really not happening right now. Right. Maybe later, but not now. Right. And I think uh, we, we it's, it's less fatal for one reason. <laughs> and why take the risk? And why take the embarrassment 
of having people, you know, die in space. Well, and it's much, much harder. I mean, you know, again, that, that rover there is not big enough to have a person in it. Uh, and it has a lot of capabilities of doing a lot of stuff. If you want to get a person there, suddenly you have to have a much bigger vehicle to get there, you know, all kinds of life support systems, redundancies built right. in. It takes a lot of space. Yeah, uh, huge amounts of material, and it's more pounds to lift, you need a bigger rocket yeah. to move it. I mean, it's got, got a thousand sort of drawbacks to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and we have systems now, robotic systems, that in a small four by four by four kind of container, we can pack a lot of science oh, yeah. and have it automated and right. have it controllable like a robot from, from Earth. Right. So exactly why would you need a human being? It's like having an autonomous, autonomous car drives better than it, it would be driven if a human being were driving it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, people do have unique capabilities, of course. We can still do things that machines can't do. We can think about uh, using our imagination. We can make decisions, perhaps, that machines will, will be flummoxed by or will make wrong. But uh, in this particular case, it seems to me the cost-benefit makes a lot of sense to go with the automated, non-human uh, yeah. systems. You know. Yeah. So not only were the Chinese avoiding the risk of having somebody die in space, I think they were also demonstrating that they had, they had robotic uh, technology right. that would allow them to do this. And yeah. uh, I think it sets a standard for a while Right. Again, anybody goes up there is going to do this. Right. Again, this is not just a we're communicating directly with the, the lander and the rover. We're communicating with the satellite, but then communicating directly with the lander and rover. Right. There's a whole extra link on there that, that again right. says you know we, we're technologically pretty sophisticated if we can do and this Lagran kind of stuff. Lagrangian, Lagrangian, Lagrangian points. Yeah. Uh, satellite track there. Right. right. The orbit. Right. Um, that's that's really unprecedented, isn't it? Well, we've we, we, done that before. We've, we've those Lagrange points were known about actually. A century ago or more, uh, but they've uh, and they've been visited a few times, and we've we've put probes in into them. But this is the first time I think maybe one's really been used well. Like I, I, I may for practical I practical benefit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is certainly one of the nicest examples of how very neatly they're using that to solve a problem that's basically it's, it's, otherwise unsolvable. Basically, right. Very clever. And yeah. and actually, yes, as you said. Um, that if they hadn't done this with Lagrangian uh, orbit, right. they, they might not have been able to do a trip right. oh, at no, all. It was, yeah. it was a key. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, the last point to discuss is what does this mean to the American space program? I mean, NASA does get a certain amount of money, but mm -hmm. it doesn't get money for this kind of thing. And I'm not sure that, that our technology is as good as what the Chinese... I mean, the question is raised mm -hmm. as to whether our technology is as good. Is this going to sort of motivate... United States to do more space, more space initiatives, more space programs, more exploration in space, or is it going to have no effect? I don't know. It's, it's an interesting one to speculate on. Um, I mean, Sputnik, if you recall, back in 57, you know, was a, a galvanizing force for the U.S. Basically, you got everyone up and, like, hey, we've got to go to space. We, it's the next frontier. We've got to be there. We've got to, you know, beat our potential enemies. Uh, it's certainly given the isolationist, nationalistic focus of our current government, uh, it's, it's hard to see that they'll treat it that way. Uh, they'll much more likely just to downplay it, poo-poo it, ignore it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I mean, the, the, the powers that be want to shrink government. Right. And they want, yeah, and, and they want to of, shrink science, for that yeah, matter. Yeah, exactly. And this They're kind of thing science. Is, is inherently very expensive to do. Uh, even yeah. the, the non-man probes are. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what it might stimulate, though. Mm -hmm. Let me see if you agree. So you have Elon Musk and his friends doing these tourist tr trips mm -hmm. up there. Um, I think it, 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 this will stimulate some people to want to be tourists and to get up there and see what it's like up there mm -hmm. and pay big bucks to go there and take big risks to mm -hmm. go there. But uh, we may find that although the government isn't doing anything, although NASA isn't funded and mm -hmm. the government not inclined to fund them, um, maybe guys like Elon Musk will you know, find more takers on, on the tourist trips. Maybe, maybe, and you know, maybe they'll you know, uh, use their burgeoning little sort of space hop industry and send things out from from uh, when they're when they're up there at the edge of space anyhow, because then it'll be much easier to send other probes off. So, yeah, there might be this might stimulate some private investment and in, in all, uh, just to yeah. See. Well, yeah. how how much uh, space exploration can um, a five point six billion dollars buy? Actually, <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> And in, if we find <laughs> aliens up there on the dark side of the moon, uh, what kind of immigration policies would? <laughs> and do we Build have the wall? Build the wall. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. Great to talk to you. Aloha. <laughs>